Hello and welcome to the second episode of this mini-series about modeling votes in Blender. This time we are going to focus on the pointed arch and we will go through the most common types of vote that come with it. So let's get right into it. Now this is something that I have already covered in quite some depth in one of my previous videos, but as one of you pointed out in the comments, there was something that actually needed a little fix. So even if you are among those who have already watched that video, I still suggest that you go through the next few minutes. When creating the ribbed vault, the first thing we need to build is the pointed arch itself, and we can do that by intersecting two circles at their respective centers, and then adding another circle as big as this intersection. We can then cut the circle in half and make it pointy by using proportional editing with the linear option enabled. As we did a few times also in the previous episode, we are going to create just one corner of the vault, using a rotated empty to drive the mirror modifier placed on the pointed arch. The diagonal rib is obtained through another circle which needs to be rotated on the X and Z axis, to be cut in half, to be resized on the X and Y axis right where the two arches are meeting, and on the Z axis to match the height of the vault. And once we get rid of all the edges in excess, what we are left with is essentially one of the four corners of the ribbed bolt. Let's now create a bit of space between the arches and now here is what we need to fix. The distance between the profile of the arch and the profile of the rib needs to be eliminated, and this can be done easily by enabling the snapping tool on vertex and by moving each of the vertices on the profile of the rib on the z-axis until they snap with the corresponding vertices lying on the profile of the arch. Now that we have the right shape, we can connect the profiles, add a mirror modifier on both the X and Y axis, and add the usual bevel plus subdiv combination to get both a smooth curvature and hard edges where needed, like for the top cross section of the vault and for the diagonal loops. Now, to create the actual profiles of the arches and the ribs, I went like I did in the old video except no additional adjustments are needed in this case, as we fix the main shape. Before converting anything into curves or vice versa, be sure to delete the modifiers you don't want to be permanently applied, since they are during the conversion process. The reason why I convert everything into curves is that in this way it is easy to define a size which is right for all of the objects at once. I would then convert back to meshes to build the final profile. And yes, you could tweak directly the bevel profile without converting back to mesh. This is going to work for the ribs or circular shapes in general, but you are going to have a few problems retaining the pointed look in your arch, especially when building complex profiles. For this reason, I still prefer the double conversion method, as it is much easier to handle geometry with just the usual set of standard tools we already know pretty well at this point. Of course, if you know a clever and simple way to do all of this using just curves, let me know in the comment section down below. When it comes to arrays, we do have the problem that the different meshes are not going to work well in combination right off the bat, as they have different start and ending points, or different boundaries so to speak. So, apart from playing with the arrays factor, one solution could be to duplicate one of the vertices of the mesh we need to make consistent and to move it right at the ending point of the main mesh, being in this case the vault. For a precise result, we can use the snapping tool set on vertex and we can then duplicate again and move the vertex this time right at the starting point of the main mesh. And since the different meshes will now share the same boundaries, it is guaranteed that they will stay in place no matter the number of iterations in the array modifier. In episode 1 we saw a method to link multiple array modifiers to a master one, reducing the number of clicks needed to build up iterations and that method was based on variable paths and drivers, but again, I treasure one of your comments about a much easier way still using drivers, so here it is. Within the main meshes array modifier you are using as the master, right-click on count and select copy as new driver. You can then simply paste it on the count property of all of the array modifiers you want to be linked to the master one. Still, if you need to change something, right-click again on count and choose edit driver and you can change the type from average value to scripted expression and play with the variable based on what you need. If we look at the vault we just built from the bottom, we can see that it is divided into four sections. While this is quite standard in Gothic architecture, it is also very common to see vaults divided into six. The logic behind is simply to take the arches at the sides of the vault and to split them into two, adding an extra rib in between the two new side arches. 
So here I have the vault from the previous chapter with no faces but just the outlines, and you can see that it is one of the four corners with a mirror on both the X and Y axis. I'm going to keep the mirror only on the Y axis and I'll apply it. I'll then select the bottom left vertex of the side arch, move the cursor there, select everything, switch the pivot point to the 3D cursor and scale on the Y axis by 0.45. I'll then reset the cursor and with the help of the snapping tool set on increment, I'll duplicate the outline of the arch and I'll move it on the Y axis symmetrically. To complete the shape, I'll add back a mirror modifier on the X axis and I'll then proceed to create the extra rib, again with a circle with 24 vertices, simply rotate it on the X axis, cut in half and resize on the X and Y axis to match the width of the vault. I'll then scale it also on the Z axis, using the 3D cursor as the pivot point, to match also the height, and finally I will adjust its curvature right as we did in chapter 1, by snapping each vertex to each of the corresponding vertices belonging to the other ribs. It is time now to connect all of the different profiles and to check whether all of the vertices are correctly merged together. In case they are not, it is enough to circle select them in X-rays mode and press M and then merge at center. Finally, we can use the techniques already explored in the previous chapter as well as in the previous episode to create the profiles of the ribs and of the arches and to link the different array modifiers using drivers as to control everything with just one click. For the fan vault we have a couple of different options coming from the English tradition and we are going to take a look at both. So, starting from the first type, what I want to do is to turn the square ribbed vault from chapter 1, which is good for modeling the aisle of a cathedral, into a rectangular type of vault to be used instead for the nave. To do that properly without disrupting the overall shape, what we need to do is to apply the mirror modifier and then scale the mesh up on the Y axis by a factor of 2. In this way, we will keep the correct proportions among the different features of the vault. I will then proceed to select just one of the four sections of the vault, as my goal here is to create a base shape as displayed in a reference image. I will as such delete the rest, move the cursor at one of the vertices at its leftmost extremity and set the origin point there as well. With my mesh perfectly centered, I can add back a mirror modifier with clipping enabled and take care of the rounded corners at the top with a bit of crease. To create the extra ribs, I will add an edge loop at the front and three at the sides, double tapping G to slide them a bit back to get a slightly more even geometry. I will then apply the mirror modifier once again and move the mesh in edit mode away from the center on both the X and Y axis. With another mirror modifier on both axes and by moving the mesh by the right amount, we can get a completely mirrored quadrant of the vault. We can now select all the edge loops flowing down from the top, duplicate them and make them a separate object. Again, I remove any modifier applied, convert to curve and play with the profile. I'll add a subdivision surface modifier to smoothen out the curvature and a mirror modifier on the X and Y axis to get the full quadrant. Similarly, I'll isolate the straight edge loop at the side, convert it to a curve to then join it with the ribs as to make it inherit their curved properties. The same process is of course valid also for the straight loops right at the middle. At this point I decided to take advantage of the profile's curve under the bevel sub palette to draw something a little less standard for all of the ribs at once. I then positioned a few bosses right at the supposed junctions among the different ribs and to complete the vault it was just a matter of using some of the arch profiles I already modeled in chapter 1 along with the techniques employed to get full arrays using just a master controller. We can now move to the second type of fan vault and it is pretty obvious that we need to start with some kind of circular pattern. So I start with a cylinder with 24 edges, select the bottom face and scale it down quite a bit. I will then add an edge loop, slide it up and scale it down to roughly match the size of the bottom face and then with Ctrl B I will ease the transition with a few additional edge loops. Back to our reference, let's look for some clues. We can see that the circular pattern is interrupted of course right where the shape intersects its previous and next iterations. But where is exactly that? If we take a look at this other loop, we can tell that it intersects right where this rib coming from the center is intersecting as well. Moreover, we have this other internal loop which is instead going all the way through right at the top of the pointed arch. With that in mind, I'm going to move the shape a bit on the Y axis and add a mirror modifier. I'll then push the shapes together to the point I get a similar pattern with the one from the reference. 
Now, the last internal loop is a bit shy of the center, so I'll add another edge loop a bit closer to it and delete the old one. At this point we know that this is the line where we need to cut our mesh. So I'm going to add a cube and move it in place with the help of the snapping tool on increment and I'm making sure that it is intersecting the fan completely. I'll then add a boolean modifier set on difference targeting the cube and I'll apply it. You can now get rid of the cube, move the mesh to the center and start deleting all of the faces apart from those facing frontally. From the front, I'll delete also the right half and add a mirror modifier to make the shape perfectly symmetric. I'll apply also this, move the shape away from the center and add another mirror modifier and I'll do this for both the X and the Y axis. To create the ribs, I'll use again the Mesh to Curves workflow, selecting the different loops of interest like the outline of the fan as well as the edge loops flowing vertically. These in particular are going a bit past the outline and one solution is to switch the gizmo to normal and to set the pivot on individual origins. Select the ending points of the vertical ribs and move them on their respective individual normal z-axis. I'll then create with the same technique also the horizontal ribs and I'll adjust the position of each control point on its normal y-axis to make the shape emerge from the base. For the main arch of the vault, I'll borrow the central loop from the base of the fan, convert it to a curve and play a bit with the profile. I'll then convert it back to a standard mesh, straighten the extremity and complete the shape with a mirror modifier, a subdivision modifier and a bevel modifier on top of that. I'll do the same also for the arches at the sides and proceed to adjust a few things here and there, like deleting some of the segments of the outline rib to get less curvy shapes. To create additional details one trick is to duplicate the base and start playing around with some additional geometry. In this way you don't have to worry about losing the original curvature and you can use this duplicated shape as a sort of an empty canvas to draw any motif you desire. Once done you can convert this additional geometry to curves again and repeat the same steps used for the other ribs. As a final step, I modeled a few additional decorations, placed them into position and by pivoting from the origin of the fan, I created the different iterations using the ribs essentially as containers. I then closed the top with a plane, a boss and some additional ribs. This is my final result. We can get rid of whatever is past the line of the two main arches to get a proper section as we did for the other types. My suggestion at this point would be to create another collection and to place everything within there. Then remove the wine mirror from the main arch, instance the collection to scene, create a plane, make it the parent of the instanced collection and enable instancing on faces. Add an array modifier to the plane and play with the factor to get it at the right spot. In this way you can simply iterate many times and keep your scene clean and light on memory. Typically used to close the apse of a cathedral, it is arranged in a semi-circular fashion and positioned right at the end of the central nave with an odd number of iterations. As such, I'll take my knees vault and move the cursor at the top of the final main pointed arch. From there, I'll add a circle with 24 vertices and I'll scale it up to match the width of the vault. I'll bring it down right where the floor is, then take the outline of the side arch and duplicate it into a separate object. I will scale it down on the y-axis by 0.5 and place its origin point right at the base. I'll then use the 3D cursor to place it at the top of the circular pattern, adjust the orientation and move it just a few inches within the circle. With the 3D cursor back at the top of the nave's arch, I'll change the pivot point to the 3D cursor and this will allow me to rotate the new arch along the circumference. I'll duplicate it and rotate it by 75 degrees, Duplicate again and rotate this time by half of it, being 37.5 degrees. I'll delete half of the central arch to then apply the mirror modifier to get the other side as well. For the ribs, I rotate the circumference on the y-axis and I'll then scale it on the z-axis to match the height of the nave. 
I'll make sure to leave just the upper right corner of the circle and from the top, and with the 3D cursor again as a pivot, I'll scale it down a bit. I'll then rotate it by half of the angle between the first two arches, being 18.75 degrees, then duplicate again and rotate a second time by the same amount. I'll then use a mirror to get the other side and then I'll join it with the arches profiles. It is now time to start connecting all of the different profiles, adjust the normals of both the apps and the nave and merge the vertices at the junction between the two sections. We can then extend the bevel modifier to the ribs belonging to the apps, crease the corners where needed and we are basically done. And this concludes this second episode on vaults in Blender, I hope you enjoyed the content and see you next time.